Yes, Marie, what is it? I'm afraid I won't have much time before my lecture on the genealogy of original sin. But if it's a simple question, we can deal with it now. Thanks, Professor Augustine. Yes. I have just a quick question. Okay, let's hear it. What is misotheism? What did you say? Miso soup with tea? I'm afraid I'm not in the culinary field. But I think miso is a Japanese soybean paste. No, Professor. I said misotheism. Oh, misotheism. Why didn't you say so first? Well, let's try to figure it out by taking the word apart. There is miso, which derives from the Greek root misos, meaning hatred. Then there's theos, and that, as you know, means God in Greek. So we have God hatred. Holy Mother of. Yes, indeed. But how strange. Where did you pick up this word? I heard the end of a radio interview about a book, something like the and old story of misotheism. Those atheists sure are getting cocky. What do you mean atheists? I mean atheists because they are the ones hating God. No, they are not. Excuse me. Did you say atheists don't hate God? You heard me right. Atheists don't believe that God exists. You cannot hate something non-existent. Who would hate their grandchildren who have not been born yet? Think about it. Okay, even if atheists don't hate God, those who do hate him must be crazy. God is the good father in heaven. You can go from God to good in zero seconds by adding just another O. If you hate what is so good then you are perverse. It's not as simple as you think, Marie. People looked at the First World War and saw thousands of soldiers massacred every day, for years on end. Some people thought that such a waste of life could only happen if God approves of it. Jews looked up to God in Auschwitz during the Holocaust and wondered why he remained silent while their children were pushed into the ovens. Others just think that the world is so full of evil that God must enjoy it to let it go unchecked. But Professor, this is blasphemy. How can you say such things? I'm just reflecting what others have said. Take Mark Twain, our great American novelist. According to him, God is a celestial bandit. William Blake called the creator a very cruel being. Rebecca West referred to God as master criminal. And William Empson even. Please stop it. I think you said something about not having much time just now. Maybe you should go on to your lecture. My lecture can wait. This conversation is more important to me right now than a room full of waiting students. You know why? Uh, I'm not sure I want to know. Because I have always wanted to say this but never dared to. I really think. Please, Professor. You don't need to come out of the closet right now, right here. And what if I want to? I am a misotheist myself. There, I said it. I feel better already. But Professor Augustine, you taught us about free will today, didn't you? You said that evil only exists on this earth because God allows us to have free will. Uh, did I say that? Yes, and you even asked us to imagine a world in which God steps in to prevent any accident or any wrongdoing before it can happen. What a poor world that would be, you said. Yes, Marie. That's the free will theodicy. And what an old rag it is. Quite worn to the thread, but not discarded yet. So, you don't believe what you teach? When it comes to the explanations of the ways of God to man, no I don't. Take that cursed free will theodicy. To begin with, if God forced free will onto me, and I am unable to return the gift, then that makes me unfree. But don't you agree that we have freedom of choice? No, when it comes to suffering, we usually don't. The quarter million victims of Haiti's earthquake did they have free will when the homes collapsed? The victims of mall shootings do they have free will when the bullets come? Heck, the mall shooter himself. If he is suffering from mental illness, does he really have free will when he pulls the trigger? What are you trying to say? I'm saying that evil usually doesn't happen from free will. By evil I mean both natural and man-made evil. They happen because they happen. And if there is a good God in heaven, then why is there so much pain in this world? 
Sounds like the Epicurean paradox. Oh, somebody paid attention in class. Good. No, not good. Because you infected my mind with anti-god thinking. I have to rinse my mind of all the blasphemy. There's no need to be afraid of God's intervention. If he doesn't stop bad things from happening, he'll probably not bother reading your mind either. But, Professor Augustine, this is heresy. No, dear Marie, it is simply a different, darker religious sensibility. So, what are you, an atheist or a misotheist? I'm first myself, a professor of religious studies who happens to be unable to stop believing in God but who also is often very angry at God. If that makes me a misotheist, then so be it. I think I will drop your class. I don't want to go to hell. No offense, but aren't misotheists a bunch of criminals and derelicts? You mean delinquents? No. I have a hunch that misotheists are upset because God does not meet their high standards of reality. Some of the greatest thinkers, artists and humanists have been enemies of God. But I just cannot handle people who think so differently from me. Oh, Marie? We are all part of the multicultural and multi-religious fabric of this society. Remember President Obama's inaugural speech? He welcomed Christians, Muslims, Hindus, and non-believers as fellow Americans. But he said nothing about misotheists. Marie, those are just labels. It means that people have different ways of coping with life and its many challenges. We can all get along as long as we don't force anybody else to accept our belief or disbelief. Uh -huh. I'd like to get a copy of that book you mentioned. Who is it by? A fellow named Schweizer. Okay, I got to run now. Bye. Goodbye, Marie.